And welcome inside the Backstage Pass. It is a Thursday and one day left in September. I still don't know where September went, but uh, it's hard to not think about that with October knocking on the door this weekend. And of course, uh, happy festivals to a lot of people out there. A lot of festivals going on this weekend, at least. I got contacted by a few, albeit one this weekend, Mr. Colin Ray performing out here near uh, Winnie, Texas, which is just outside of Houston. And of course, our good friend Roger Crager, William Beckman, uh, William Clark Green, a lot of great Texas country artists down here. So it's the Winnie Rice Festival this weekend. It starts tonight with Wayne Toops, a good uh, Cajun night out there. And, of course, uh, continues oh. tomorrow and on Saturday. We all love Wayne Toops down here. And pleased to welcome in our uh, guest here. She needs no introduction. Of course, I'm going to give her one anyway because she's been doing this a long time here on the Backstage Pass. And, of course, uh, just receiving a platinum award uh, for the duet with uh, Texas' own Willie Nelson on the Half Nelson uh, album he just released there too as a lacy j dalton good friend of the backstage pass uh, miss lacy how you doing i could not be better i am so happy we are having the best weather i know you are too <laughs> we're, we're both having like these beautiful early fall days this is my favorite time of year it's it really pretty up here a beautiful time here in texas the humidity's gone down the temperatures hey. are looking good and we're we're expecting all the uh, great weather like this for the next 10 days like the morning i walked outside this morning and we're talking like low 50s and just, oh, man, that 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 fall breeze, that cool air that you just kind of feel when you step outside. Lacey, it was just fantastic, and, and I love it because uh, now I can actually take my, my daughter outside and enjoy more uh, of this cooler weather <laughs> compared to You know, it gets hot. I tell you what, I have been down in Houston when it is hot, and it's not only hot, it's humid. So you kind of feel like you're swimming along under like a hot bathtub full of water. It can really get hot. <laughs> so I know you really appreciate it. And we've had the same thing up here. I, it's been very unusual weather. It got so hot and then suddenly it's great. I mean, it just could, there's not a cloud in the sky today. And it's probably, I don't know what, 65 degrees, maybe 70. Yeah, yeah it's really it's nice. A beautiful time. And real here. cool at night. Really cool. <laughs> so you can open doors. Let the cool, you know, I'm appreciating it. Well, I it's do too. Love positive. Yeah, and, and you got to love the West Coast, especially this time of year. Was, we were talking before the show, we are talking about San Diego, California, and oh. I love that 55 to 75 degree type weather just because San Diego just never really gets hot out there, just right there being on the coast. And uh, even, I mean, Arizona this time of year is a lot nicer than it is in the summertime, so it's just uh, a favorite place to go out west. And I love traveling west uh, compared to, I tell you, and I'll say this, my heart goes out to all the, the folks in uh, Naples and Florida down there too. We've been through it here in Texas three out of the last four years with these storms. I know they're no joke, but I hope everybody got out or in their property and everything's okay. So my my heart and everything, um, thoughts and prayers are with everybody uh, down there uh, south in South Florida because uh, again, we've you go through hell, but you come out stronger. And I can tell you just from speaking on behalf of someone who's gone through that and had family gone through that three out of the last four years. Um, yeah, nothing to play around with. So definitely, if we can do anything here, we're, we're here to help, no doubt about it. But hopefully everybody is is okay and, I guess, evacuated or rode out the storm. And and definitely uh, thoughts and prayers are with your families, no doubt, here from the Backstage Pass. Let me ask you about this because um, let's start with that uh, Platinum Award for this this duet with Willie uh, on the Half Nelson album. Uh, when you guys got the word that this had, had come out, and I know another honor, you're, you're celebrating the 40th anniversary or just passed of, of 16th Avenue. Um, and you're going to be getting a Lifetime Achievement Award at this 2022 Josie Music Awards coming up. I believe it's October 23rd. You've kept busy, wow. and people have <laughs> reciprocated back with all these great awards. Congratulations on all these achievements. Talk about this and and just the recognition, even, even uh, like you said, 40 years later, the music stands strong. Yeah, no, I it I thank you, and it, it it's so it's so humbling, and it's I'm so grateful to still be doing this this far down the road. I'm really still having a great time and uh, writing some new music, but these awards for an independent artist, you know, when you're with the big record companies, there's a lot more recognition. And uh, I just appeared with David uh, for sale on the mm -hmm. Facebook and I had a t-shirt on that said, not dead yet. <laughs> and David instantly wanted one of those t-shirts. We got hundreds and hundreds of uh, uh, contacts on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't about me and David. Everybody wanted that T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I want the T-shirt. <laughs> but anyway, it's great to be this far down the road and to be an independent artist and to receive these awards that uh, really 
uh, the Josie Award just is, was a complete surprise to me because as an independent artist, like I say, you don't get as much publicity and you don't know if anybody's uh, hearing your music or not. And they apparently have. And um, it's a, it's really it's really wonderful. And, and the, the, the Willie thing, that was, that was the coolest project to be on mm -hmm. because there were so many greats on that, that uh, CD. It was Ray Charles and Julio Iglesias and George Jones and Carlos Santana and Leon Russell. I mean, there were just, I think Neil Young was even on it. It was just an amazing bunch of people. And I got to be the lone woman on that record. And, and that was, that was kind of important to me uh, I didn't even realize it at the time, but we women had, we had a glass ceiling we were breaking through. Some people, uh, it's, you know, we had to bang up against that a bit. When I first went to Nashville, there were very few women who were producing their own records. Um, most of the time you went there and producers told you what you had to sing. Mm -hmm. And uh, it changed while I was there. And I think one of the things that uh, did change it was um, some of the outlaw music that came in from Texas. Uh, that was the music that brought me back to country music, Waylon and Willie and the boys, you know. And I think Chris Christopherson was probably my favorite, is still my favorite songwriter of all mm -hmm. time. And his songs are so powerful. And um, they actually have changed my life a couple times. You, well, are you familiar with his work? I, I am. There's a lot of things. You're growing up on some of the best music there, for, for me, it was grandma was always like 70s, 80s, 90s. She, she'll make the, the, the 90s baby out of me, the 80s and, and things like that. So, yeah, I may have forgotten some of the titles of the song, but, man, when it comes on, you hear that first verse, you can kind of go back and go, that's Chris Christopherson. You go back to your, your stuff. And that's what I think to me, you know, that I listen to a lot of the prime country on – Sirius XM 58, and that's one of my main stations. I keep it on a lot. If it's not sports music, then I'm not listening to much else. That's why this this show covers those two topics. But, you know, looking back at it, and I remember today, even your music now uh, with these great songs like 16th Avenue and Black Coffee and Taking It Easy, you can hear the first few uh, just instrumentation of the song, the little bit of the instrumentation, and you automatically know uh, what artist sang that song even back in the day. And, and I love the steel guitar because I, I kind of felt like it was one of those instruments that was missing from uh, music today. Again, nothing against, you know, people putting out their own stuff. That's why they're entitled to it. Um, and things are supposed to sound different. That's what makes music so so much a great industry. But I, I think classic country, to, at least to me, uh, for a few artists that I've had here on the, on the show, it's starting to make a little bit of a comeback. And I think that we're missing some of those steel guitars and and hearing the first few lines of a song and going, that's Lacey J. Dalton. That's Conway Twitty. That's Merle Haggard. I know the industry's changed so much since you got started, right? Well, I think it's harder now. Uh, a lot of times when I'm listening, they don't ad identify the artists on the radio. Mm -hmm. they, yeah. You hear this girl. I heard a song the other day that just absolutely floored me. The hook line of the song was, you think it's your fault, but it isn't. I fell in love and you didn't. And I thought, Man, that is a song because <laughs> that's happened to just about everybody or you know somebody that you love that it's happened to. and uh, But they didn't – I had to look to find out who the artist was because they don't say the name of the artist. I think that's a mistake. I think it's important to know who the artists are, mm -hmm. who the ones are that are doing the, the stuff that you really uh, are gravitated to um, because – a lot of times those people that will have a song like that will have a lot of songs like that because they want to sing something that's meaningful. They want to sing something that will uh, – there's a song out there, you know, if you have a dream, chase it because the dream won't chase you back. Great advice. That's the stuff from old country that's coming into mm -hmm. the new country. That And there's a lot of really innovative new stuff too oh, yeah. that, you know, I didn't think I'd like at all at first. Like some of the rap country that I've heard at the first time, I thought that is not a good marriage. That's hideous. But some of it now is better. And I'm mm -hmm. going, okay, maybe, maybe so, you know, maybe that does work. But when I first heard some of those first songs with the rap, I just went, and I don't have a problem with rap. I taught up in uh, the prison up in Susanville, California. Mm hmm uh, for three and a half years. And a lot of the guys I taught songwriting and a lot of the guys up there were writing rap mm -hmm. and I yeah. really got an appreciation for it, uh, because they were talking about stuff that was really real to them. 
you know, and they were saying it. I just had to get them to not say uh, certain words over and over and over <laughs> that, <laughs> that are really fun to say, but, you know, or get tiresome after a while, you know. I, yeah, and I think, like you said, lyrics to me uh, mean so much in songs because now I'm even, even doing this for almost uh, four years now. I'm doing reviews of albums, reviews of singles, giving quotes on things. So deeply, my mind has to go from one song to the next, to one artist to the next, and really listen deeply uh, to the lyrics. And, I, and and a lot of fans, you know, do that even today. I mean, live shows, thank God they're they're back. And for you guys, I know the tour schedule is, is picking up again, too. But the lyrics mean so much to me. Uh, in songs and that, that's a credit to even today uh some of the most amazing songwriters in nashville i mean over the years you've worked with some of the, the greats out there uh you know list them name after name uh but i think it's it's so important to come up with the right lyrics with the right song to connect with fans right i think so and i think if you know if we do anything the really good ones the uh, people like tom schuyler people like guy clark people like chris mm -hmm. christopherson they're gonna have a they're gonna have a great song like Bobby McGee, and then five minutes later they're gonna have a Why Me Lord that just knocks you out. You know, just what have I ever done? You know, those songs uh, people need to be they need the cotton candy, and they need the pie and ice cream. But people also need meat and potatoes. And I think a lot of the the older writers that have been around, and even some of the very young new writers are having something to say to people that changes them, that helps them. Yeah, this is not an easy place to be. I mean, I don't know what to compare it with, but planet Earth, you know, in this world, we will have trouble. And something wonderful about music is mm -hmm. it can heal that, those places in you that need healing and give you strength when you don't have it. And uh, that's always been why I do music. I like to do songs that have, uh, have, some, have some meaning. Yeah, yeah and, and and you did. And here, <laughs> here we're talking about uh, 40th anniversary of those classics. Like I said, 16th Avenue, uh, Black Coffee. Just some of these these are great, uh, great songs. You did that, I guess. And I always love to ask this too because a lot of sometimes people love talking about the songs that are uh, this old. I know uh, talking to Johnny Lee, he had very minimal words to say about him. He let the songs and of course the, the things uh, kind of do themselves. And, and of course, when I had uh, Mickey Gilly on, he would talk about. Like you said, just what's in a song, what it means to people, what it means to fans and, and doing all that, too. So uh, when you talk about these songs over the years and you go through uh, things like 16th Avenue, Black Coffee and, and Taking It Easy, did you kind of know either writing or working with a team of writers that you may have had something special when, before you guys stepped in the studio to record it? We knew we all knew was 16th Avenue, Tom Schuyler's song that I was mm -hmm. so fortunate to be the one to sing. We all knew that song. But I had started writing a song out in the West Coast called Everybody Makes Mistakes. And uh, I did not think that my producer would even let me record it. But I was playing it in the outside office. He was in talking to Jones or something in the in the thing. And I really think it was George Jones that he was talking to. And I was sitting out in the outer office just playing this song, Everybody Makes Mistakes. Later, I found out that that song is the most played song I've ever had in the in the continental United States. It's not true worldwide, but here in the United States, I only found that out about three years ago. Mm -hmm. And sadly, I had had it probably not in the show for about six or seven years. <laughs> I really didn't know you liked this. But that one's the next 40th anniversary this, this that's month as well. It's hard to believe. I'm going to go back to an album you did even, and I say, I can't believe it's been since 2014, but uh, my God, Tennessee Waltz, you guys re-recorded a lot of those uh, classics there. I mean, the title track itself, Crazy Blue Eyes, 16th Avenue. Uh, I, I thought it was one of the best records produced that I'd ever heard when it comes to, you know, to a record out there. And and uh, you, you talk about it, it's got this kind of, you know, feel. And I want to say, if I recall, you had like a, a, a wagon wheel up against a building on this album. And it was like an old tin roof kind of, but Tennessee Waltz was uh, one of my favorite albums you ever did. You know that uh, that, that song. I, I I the first song, Crazy Blue Eyes, was really magical, because I wrote that with my longest friend, and it was the song that got my record deal and um, became my very first hit and was on permanent rotation in a lot of radio stations for a long, long time. Well, then I didn't know what to record, <laughs> but I remember my mother only had one record. We were pretty poor when we were kids. And my mother only had one little single record of the Tennessee Waltz. And one night I was thinking, what can I do? Can I do? And the 
voice in my head said, do the Tennessee waltz. And I said, are you crazy? You know, are you out of your mind? I can't do the Tennessee waltz. It's been done. Well, um, I had a great um, b- bass player at the time. Mm-hmm. And um, he, I said, I want to do this song, but I want to stretch it out. I want to be able to really stretch it out a little. Can you change the time signature a little bit? And can we make this just a little bit different than the than the way that it was done? And so we did the Tennessee Waltz, and it was the second big hit that I had. And thank God, thank God, I listened. <laughs> well, I, I love again that duet that you did with Willie, the slow movement outlaw, which is kind of that that Texas uh, ballad. I got to hear it, no doubt, and uh, that had to be very special. Kind of what was the backstory of of coming up with this? I know you've known a lot of the, the greats in the industry for a long time. Did you contact Willie? Did Willie contact you? Was it a was it a producer, manager? How did the the, the lines a, of communication kind of come together? It's a cool story. <laughs> I have this I have this friend. Um, his name is Tom Metcalf, and he's an Indian, and he's a very very wise kind of guy. And he, I was visiting with him down in Texas. He's down in Denison, I think, mm-hmm. um, still. And he said, you "Need to do this song." I said, okay. <laughs> they played it for me, and I really like the song. It's a song about how, you know, we've taken so many of the resources from our country, and we've kind of used them up. And there's one line in the song that talks about America. It talks about the old railroads shutting down and everything. And it says, it's not that I blame them for taking her bounty. I just wish that they'd taken her slow. Because where has a slow moving, once quick draw outlaw got to go? So the song just knocked me out. It was mm-hmm. just, I just, I just absolutely knocked me out. And uh, he says, and you need to do it with Willie. And I said, well, I know Willie, but you know, everybody wants to do a duet with Willie. And I, you know, I can't just go up to him and say, well, you'd sing this song with me. I don't feel like I can do that. So it so happened that Indian Tom was a really good friend of um, Willie's sister. Mm-hmm. And he took the song to her and said, I need to ask Willie to do this song with Lacey J. And that's how it happened. <laughs> Willie's sister gave Willie the song, which he was familiar with. It had actually been written for him like 20 years before or 10 years before. And he had just finished recording his record. Mm-hmm. And um, so he gave the song. He loved the song, but he gave it to Waylon. So Waylon was the first to record Slow Moving Outlaw. But the writer was disappointed mm-hmm. um, because she had wanted it. She had written it specifically for Willie. And so with us doing it as a duet, her dream came true. And so did wow. mine. I love it, too. And like you said, it, it just goes full circle. And, you know, I, I think it, it made me think about, too, because you mentioned the only woman, it, those greats. I mean, like you mentioned Ray Charles and Carlos Santana, Neil Young. Uh, I mean, Willie just singing had to be one of the high points of your career, if not the high point. And also what it did, because I, I know I interview now more females on this show or aspiring country artists coming up as female country artists and knowing it's a very tough industry for them to uh, put their music out. But for women in country music in general, Lacey, it had to be one of the highest points in your career to duet with Willie. It was, it was, I was so honored and, um, and it just kind of happened by magic. It just, <laughs> it just happened by magic. It was a great song and it's time had come and it was written for Willie and we got to do it together and i really have to thank my friend tom metcalf mm-hmm. uh, for doing that for me he um he's amazing yeah you like him a lot i think <laughs> <laughs> I, I know you've worked with a lot of great producers in your time and uh one that i remember too uh and i believe you just recently uh billy uh, um billy cheryl is coming up with the right name if i pronounce it correctly uh right. talk about this because that's another it's amazing because i love all different types of records when i get a chance to listen to it because i get so much music now that, that crossed my desk and you could always say that instrument's in that song or this is you know they, they had a jazz singer and there were some trumpets in there and some trombone stuff and all the things the producers now do with the record and that's all this advanced technology i've heard great things about billy Sherrill. i mean no doubt people just have, have told me just a tremendous uh producer to work with what was it like to to work with billy on, on this project too he was i've worked with a lot of producers mm-hmm. 
Billy was amazing. He was so kind. He he wasn't a you know he wasn't a smushy kind of guy. He was actually kind of a sarcastic little guy. But but he, but he really was. He really knew how to work with an artist. He believed in me more than I believed in myself. He made me feel like. I was the best singer in the whole world, and he just loved the way I sang. And I'm not sure that he really did feel that way. I, I, one time he said to me, no, I, I hired you because I like your voice. I signed you because I liked your voice. He said, but really, he said, it's your writing. He said, that's, what, that's why you're here. I like the way you write. So I don't know if he ever really truly loved my strange little voice, but he certainly helped me make the most of it on his, uh, with his production. He was very, very gentle to work with. If I had, he never told me how to sing something. Mm -hmm. If I had a problem making a note sound the way I wanted to sound, he'd say, well, do it like, and try this. And then he said, well, we'll try this. He never said, don't do that, or don't mm -hmm. sing with that tone, or don't sing that hard, or he didn't say what not to do. He just helped you do be the very best you could be. He, I will be forever. I got to tell him that too. A few years ago, he was up at Merle Haggard's place in mm -hmm. California and I, they were recording something up there. I don't even know what they were doing, but one of the engineers that I'd worked with was up there with him. And the engineer mm -hmm. said, uh, have how long has it been you talked to Billy? And I said, oh, it has to be 20 years. I haven't talked to him in a long time. He said, well, I want to put him on with and so I got to talk to Willie and, or Billy Sherrill, and I got to tell him how grateful I was wow. for how he was, because he truly was a great producer mm -hmm. and a great friend. He'd get so excited. I remember one time he wanted me to write pop songs, which is not my thing. It was his thing. <laughs> I like outlaw stuff. That's yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> that's what brought me back to country music was Waylon and Willie and the boys, mm -hmm. and I like that outlaw stuff. Well, he wanted me to sing pop music because I think he thought I was of an age that I really needed to get into something that I could sing in an evening dress or something. Well, mm -hmm. that wasn't going to work. But I wrote uh, pop songs for him. And one of them that I wrote was Slow Down. And it was a top 10 hit. Uh, but he, at some point when I we were playing it for him, um, it was Slow Down, you're pushing the night away, slow down. I can't even remember it. Mm -hmm. But I remember he went, oh, he says, I know what to do. We're going to stop in the middle and go, we're going to slow the music, cut the music in half and go, slow down. But the hair stood up on his arm when he got an idea. And he was like that to work with. He was amazing. He's just amazing. Now, I don't think, I don't know how I ever deserved to have such a wonderful producer, but he was truly wonderful. The key is to, like you said, longevity and writing great songs and letting those songs speak to the audience that they're supposed to speak to, too. Again, again, the uh, 40th anniversary of the Millionaire Play song, Everybody Makes Mistakes, and uh, all the great things out there, the the work with Billy Nelson, no doubt. We're going to take a quick time out. we got to come back and do it. I'm going to have a little fun with, with Lacey. We'll do a little rapid fire, get some food questions in there, some drink questions. And, food? <laughs> yeah, just food questions, you know, nice. cooking lately, things like that, or just, you know, for me, it's been a lot of takeout, but that's been kind of like trying to eat vegetables and whatever, and <laughs> you know, get rid of the COVID weight and all that kind of stuff, you know, being a new dad. Oh, good but, luck. Uh, Everybody's fighting that. <laughs> Everybody's <laughs> you, fighting you. <laughs> We'll take a time out for our sponsors. Come right back. More with Lacey J. Dalton. It is the Backstage Pass again, live on the YouTube channel and at the uh, sportsguyspodcast.com. Of course, the website out there, which we're powered by. Thanks to our friends over at Creative out in California. They take care of the website and do a very good job of that. Quick uh, timeout coming back. A word from MitchMax.com, Hank Jr. Productions, and Bangtail Whiskey. Hang tight. We're coming back. The Bangtail Pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish.
Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host Kirsty Kraus as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass... And back here on the show with Lacey J. Dalton. Of course, every time I see that video, it's like, you know, Linda Davis was on this show, another great icon in the country music industry. I love Linda Davis and her husband, too. Become very good friends with them in the music industry and just another pioneer of country music. We're back with one of those right here on the show. And Lacey J. Dalton, of course, if you miss any shows, you can check out uh, social media out there. And uh, the Sports Guys the podcast.com, the YouTube channel, all that stuff is out there for you guys. Uh, listening pleasure tomorrow. Uh, Lacey K. Booth will be on the show. And then here in a couple of weeks, we've uh, got some more surprises for you. So stay tuned uh, for that too as well. I-, I wanted to ask you about this before I get into the food questions. Um, the latest uh, work, and we want to talk about this, there's a, a four song EP called Scarecrow, which is uh, out there available, all streaming uh, music sites. Tell me about this and, and how Scarecrow kind of was was born. <laughs> Uh, Scarecrow, Scarecrow was born from a, a long marriage that, mm-hmm. you know, I was uh, married to my uh, business manager for a long time. And we always said, you know, if in the unlikely and impossible to think about event that we would ever break up, mm-hmm. that he would give me the business. Well, sir. He gave me the business. <laughs> <laughs> and so... I wrote a song about it called Scarecrow, mm-hmm. and I wrote it probably 13 years ago, wow. maybe 14 years ago, and I could not sing it. I couldn't sing it without crying. Mm-hmm. I just couldn't get through the song. And finally, uh, in 2000, about 18, I decided, okay, um, I'm over it enough. Because I don't know, my sister and I both had divorces after long marriages, and we both took it really hard. I know some people go, oh yeah, Louie and I, we just, we just decided we didn't like each other anymore. It just wasn't working. We outgrew each other and we're fine. He, I love him. He loves me. (laughs) Not us. We're like smithereens, totally devastated. And I thought, you know, I bet there are other people out there that have been through this, through long, had long marriages that in the end, you know, I, I always used to wonder, why couldn't they figure it out a long time ago. Why does it last? <laughs> but, the, but anyway, having experienced that, I had to write write it. And mm-hmm. it's an odd song. I, the only thing way I can describe it is it's kind of Appalachian. It's mm-hmm. real different. It's not, it's not really country music. But I was up in um, Idaho playing for a bunch of uh, actually Western music aficionados. Western music. Not mm-hmm. even just country, but Western and I decided I'm just going to see what they think of this thing. And so I played Scarecrow, and the whole audience in the middle of the show stood up and clapped. It was so amazing because it, this was not an audience that I would ever think would ever mm-hmm. like that song. And I've had that experience over and over with that particular song. And I made that um, CD specifically for that song. I wanted to get that song out of my system. I wanted to get it out into the world for people who are going through that. Because you need to know that somebody else has been there and there is a light at the end of the tunnel, even if it is a train oncoming train, at least there's light. There's light light there, no doubt. And like you said, it's good to get that off your back and get that monkey off because it's it's one of those songs that had to get out there and it was born from the the going through the real world experience, no doubt. Uh, I'm not sure we talked about this last time you you come on with me, but I wanted to say congratulations. on the 2017 for the uh, inductee for the North American Country Music Association oh. uh, International Hall of Fame. Uh, more just great recognition your way. Uh, not surprised when it comes to what I saw that. Um, just, again, getting people to reach out to you, publications, um, Hall of Fame uh, type members, uh, board of directors, people like that. People that pay attention to the collective body of works that you put together uh, over the your, your career. Uh, just more great recognition. And I'm sure you have to rank that right up there with, with all your achievements, right? Well, I have to tell you that, you know, these things, when you're an independent artist, mean so much to you. Mm-hmm. They mean so much to you because you don't have that big promotional push from the record companies anymore. And it's a big deal. I mean, you are 
uh, when you have that big push, it's a lot easier for people to remember what you did and who you are and, and uh, so on. When you're an independent artist, you either have to be like incredible on social media, which I suck at. Actually, <laughs> <I do too. laughs> no, you don't. You do. Well, you know, it's just, Look at you. It's, I'm you okay do. with it, but you know, but I'm not do. spectacular. <laughs> I think you're pretty damn good at it, but I, but I myself not so very much. Um, and I think that you know, when you get these awards, um, when you aren't all over the place, it means so very much to you. It's really, and it really helps. It get, helps you get more shows. It helps people know you're still alive. This is a good thing. Mm -hmm. The not dead yet t-shirt is a <laughs> <laughs> which is a good thing. Yeah. Which is a real good thing. I think we could probably I could probably retire on the not dead yet t-shirts. <laughs> yeah. yeah and my, my great manager, Leslie Adams. Uh -huh. She I used to I used to say things like not dead yet. Not dead. And she finally had this t-shirt <laughs> made and now everybody wants them. <laughs> I, I, I tell you what, if you have one of those, I'm gonna have to get in touch with your your manager because I'd love to to wear one of those to represent here in Texas, just to have <laughs> something like that to wear down here would be uh, fantastic too, no doubt. All right, let's talk some food, a little rapid fire here. What, uh, what food food has been the the latest for you? What craving? What is what is the Lacey J. Dalton latest craving out there? Oh, I got to tell you. It's easy. Oh, you know, would you get the back? <laughs> you got to see this. This is, uh, you know, I have this boyfriend and he turned me on to these things. Oh, and I am so addicted now. I am completely <laughs> addicted to fried crispy jalapenos. Oh my goodness! I didn't really. I mean, I don't know that. if I can actually do this because it's the name <laughs> of the man. But you the, can do that. Uh, they, they're kind of like those onions that every those fried onions that everybody puts mm -hmm. on green bean casserole at Christmas time. Yeah, yeah. They're kind of like I, that. Only they're jalapenos. So Ooh. if you're like me, I had a, some sort of a SARS virus about five or six years ago. Mm -hmm. I can't taste anything anymore. Mm -hmm. I can't smell anything. I'm really mm -hmm. the perfect roommate. But uh, <laughs> as, a, as a cook, it makes it hard when you're as a cook because I never really used recipes very much. I always just kind of cooked. You know, mm -hmm. I, once I made something once or twice, then I would always want to mess with it and see how much better I could make it and stuff. But the <laughs> fried jalapenos, I mean, you could eat anything with those mm -hmm. on. If you like spicy food, which I do, because actually I can taste it, um, you're going to love fried jalapenos. And they're not, it's kind of hard to find them. You got to go online to like Amazon to get them because they're always sold out in the stores. You can't get them. I mean, you if you get addicted to them like I am, I have like four bags up there now. <laughs> <laughs> Which you know, you got to well, pace yourself over the, the the course of a few weeks, not to. Well, it, it doesn't yeah. last. They don't last that long because I'm doing the <laughs> doing the nutra death. You know, mm -hmm. trying to you know uh, get off COVID weight. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've had to fight weight my whole life. Well, yep. after COVID, I just kind of needed a cart to kind of roll myself around. <laughs> <laughs> okay, time to throttle back a bit. Throttle back. So on some of that food, you know, the uh, Nutrisystem food, which is actually pretty decent. They have frozen mm -hmm. stuff. That's pretty good. Well, if the if you can't taste that, you can sure taste it with the fried jalapenos. <laughs> yeah. Which is a good, I don't know how healthy they are, but they sure are great. <laughs> which is a good, good problem to have, no doubt. And like yeah. I said, for me, it's always like uh, my wife's like, well, can you eat pizza every day? I'm like, well, that's my favorite food. And I can taste it and love it and love all the different toppings and the, the different concoctions you can make with it and stuff like that. And I actually tried something for the first time in a long time on pizza. It was like the Hawaiian pizza, the ham with the, the pineapple. And I was very surprised that uh, I'd like a little sweet and sour uh, taste, but I did. And that's. It is surprising because it sounds horrible, but it's great. <laughs> <laughs> you bite into it, just like those jalapenos, uh, like I said, those chips. I would have to to try those because I always tell people, don't knock it till you try it. And, you know, if you take well, a bite and spit it out, that means you didn't like it. But if you take it and you start going, that's pretty good. <laughs> you got to like spicy food, though. They are spicy. Oh, they're jalapenos. So if absolutely. you don't like jalapenos, they're not as spicy as biting into a fresh jalapeno with a seed still in it that, you know, mm -hmm. make your eyes water. And go. It's, they're not like that, but they're pretty spicy. It is pretty. Uh, but it takes a, a more bland food mm -hmm. that you might have to be eating if you're trying to lose weight from COVID. Um, and it turns it into something quite, quite wonderful. I haven't tried it on ice cream yet, but uh, oh. <laughs> that's that's interesting uh, yeah I mean, let me know how that, that would be that, that would be disgusting, that would be disgusting. Uh, 
Yeah. Uh, speaking of the the tour schedule, I know it was busy. Uh, even back just in a couple of months there, June, you guys were I mean city after city. Is it still going strong? Or are you guys looking to add dates to it? Uh, what, what's the next stop on the tour for you? Well, we're always looking for uh, things to do, but right now we're on our way back to Nashville. The, our next mm -hmm. trip will be back to Nashville. We play the Grand Ole Opry on the 21st to celebrate the 40th anniversary of 16th Avenue, mm -hmm. and everybody makes mistakes. And then we're playing uh, at the Homestead uh, Hall in Columbia, Tennessee, and then we're back at the opera at the Josie Awards to play 16th Avenue again to get that lifetime award. And then um, we're, we have uh, some stuff lined up that I'm really excited about in November. I'm going back down to um, my old stomping grounds of the Santa Cruz Mountains, and I get to play some shows along with my old band of like 30 some years, along with um, my current accompanist, because we live seven hours apart. I live mm -hmm. seven hours apart from uh, where I used to live in the Santa Cruz Mountains. And I used to go down there twice a month and rehearse the band. And it just it got really, it got exhausting. <laughs> and um, I didn't mind it really. For a long time, I didn't mind it. But boy, in the winter, when you have to go up over these passes, these Western passes on Route 80, mm -hmm. from where I live in Reno down to the Bay Area, it's it can be hairy. The the snow is as high as there's sometimes twenty or thirty feet. I mean wow. it's it's big, and uh, the roads are uh, very hazardous. And so I decided you better pull back and find some players up where you live. And and I was very fortunate to find uh, Dale, your mm -hmm. Dale Pone, and your Dale uh, is a, a very fine uh, guitar player and mandolin player. And um, we've been playing now for as he likes to put it. 13 long years. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got a lot of busy schedule, no doubt. And I just want to say congratulations on a just terrific career. Uh, one of the pioneers in the business, the platinum award for the duet with Willie on the half Nelson album for the song slow moving outlaw. And of course uh, the EP scarecrow and uh, you guys are, are always out there. If you guys want to follow more, uh, check her out at LaceyJDalton.org and, of course, on all the socials out there. And um, we always appreciate you. And I, I know I do from doing this show for the last three and a half years, getting to know some amazing artists here on this this media outlet. And I thank you, for again, for all the contributions to country music, uh, touring with some of the greats, and just you keeping your 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 path, just, man, uh, making it flow. And you've done that with some great music and leaving your mark on uh, this industry called country music. So, hey, best of luck with the awards. And, um playing the songs. Uh, congratulations on the 40th anniversary of Everybody Makes Mistakes. Um, I'd love to have you back anytime. You know I would. I want you to come down to Santa Cruz to our shows in Santa Cruz and Monterey to hear us play with my old band of 30 years. We are what, uh, now, what are those dates coming up? I may, I may just have to fly out there and see you they guys. They are November the um, 17th and 19th. Okay. Um, and to, yeah. we are gonna, And then we have a bunch of Christmas shows. But um, I am so looking forward to playing. My old players are such, well, they're like my family. They're like brothers. It's like brothers that I haven't seen for a while. Mm -hmm. It's going to be so great to do that. And some of them are, some of them are uh, people who've played with uh, the bass player. Uh, Bill has played with uh, Willie Nelson on Maui. Mm -hmm. And he's played uh, with uh, the Jefferson Airplane and the Jefferson Starship and Big Brother and the holding company and the new riders of the purple sage for many years as their bass player. So it's a, uh, it's a little bit different sound on the West coast that I have. And I'm looking forward to playing some of those interesting songs and playing scarecrow with them and some of the new stuff. So if you get a wild hair and you want to come out and, and have cooler weather, I, I think that's a, that's an idea. It popped it in my head. You know, the wife's in the other room. I can I can ask her when we get off here and be able to to maybe sort this thing out and say, do you want do you want to do a little spontaneous, honey? Do you want to get out to California and and see this too? But you guys make sure y'all check out uh, LaceyJDalton.org and of course all the social media and uh, go check out uh, everything out there from the awards shows to the Josie Music Awards October twenty third. Uh, she's going to stay busy even uh, 45, 40 years later with all this great <laughs> music out here. She's doing it, and she's a pioneer and a legend in the business. Uh, Lacey, sure appreciate the time. And if I can make that show, I will I will contact uh, management, get out there. I'd love to be your guest if I can get out there. Brandon, we would love to have you. And you'll I think you I really think you it's a beautiful area. The Santa Cruz area in and Monterey is I mean, it's just as beautiful as San Diego. You'll like it up there too. 
And especially, like I said, November is the type of year to <laughs> get outdoors more and enjoy that beautiful <laughs> California weather, too. You guys, uh, make sure you check it out, too. Of course, all the great work out there, too. If you miss anything, of course, the interview is going to be out there across uh, the Sports Guys uh, podcast.com and, of course, the YouTube channel and all the different socials uh, that we have out there. Uh, again, Lacey, thanks so much. And, and tell uh, the family we said hello from the backstage pass and looking forward to uh, seeing more great work down the road, no doubt. <laughs> Thank you. You the best. I try to be. She's the one and the only Lacey J. Dalton and country music out there. And, of course, you guys, tomorrow, 4 o'clock, Lacey K. Booth will actually be uh, on the show coming up tomorrow. You may know her from American Idol. And uh, coming up here in a few weeks, we're going to track her down. Caitlin Smith, she's doing very well on uh, Sony Music out there. So be on the lookout for uh, Caitlin Smith here on the Backstage Pass, too, as well. We'll see you guys tomorrow. We'll see you out at the festival this weekend. Colin Ray and uh, William Clark Green. And, of course, our good friend uh, William Beckman is going to open Coming up tomorrow night at the Winnie Rice Festival in Winnie, Texas. Uh, great weather. Get out there. Tickets only $10. And, of course, uh, kids five and over are only 5 bucks. How about that for a festival? You really can't beat that. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 4 o'clock on the Backstage Pass. Until then, take care and have a great night. We'll see you soon. Adios, Brandon.